Well, just we thought the Cardinals' national championship dreams were coming to an end, everything turned in their favor. UofL didn't lose last night, but three teams in the top five did, and that caused a big shakeup in the polls today. Take a look at the new AP and coaches' top five. They are the exact same, and you see the Cardinals are in the top three with only two weeks left in the regular season. Now keep in mind, although this is a good sign, it doesn't mean the Cardinals will definitely be in the top four in the college football playoff rankings. That's the poll that matters most right now. And remember, that one comes out on Tuesday. Of course, things could have easily gone the other way for Louisville last night. Katie George and Rick Bosich explain how the Cardinals were able to turn it on and turn things around against Wake Forest. That should be a tough matchup. Meanwhile, in college basketball, the second-ranked Wildcats also have a big one coming up. On Tuesday, they battle number 12 Michigan State at Madison Square Garden. Tonight, one final warm-up before heading to New York City. John Calipari and company taking on Canisius at Rupp. UK a little slow getting out of the starting gate here. Malik Johnson hitting the three for the Griffins. The Wildcats actually trailed by four with less than five to go before the break. But that's when things turned. Isaiah Briscoe going in hard for the bucket. He tied a team high with 21. UK closed the half on a 17-4 run. Second half, Wildcats pulling away. How about De'Aaron Fox splitting the double team to Bam Adebayo for the jam. UK up 11. And later Fox says, I'm going to do this myself. The bucket and one. He too had 21. The Cats take it 93-69 the final. Afterwards, Cal crediting Isaiah Briscoe for the turnaround. Isaiah was the man. What he did was he just willed us when we were dying and just said, look, I'm not settling. I'm, I'm going to get something at the rim. You build your own self-esteem, self-confidence. You build that will. Uh, you don't surrender because you've invested too much. Mm -mm. UK now 2-0 and oh this season. Also in action today, the U of L women's team, Junior Maish Hines Allen, on the edge of a personal milestone. She entered today's game against Belmont, only five points shy of a thousand for her career. She didn't score at all in the first half, but Asia Durr sure did. End of the period, Durr at the buzzer, boom, that's a three. She scored 11 of her 18 in the first. Cardinals were up 10 after one, much to the chagrin of former U of L assistant Cam Newbauer, who now is the head coach of the Ruins. His team really didn't challenge the Cardinals in this one, nor did Allen surpass 1,000. An off night, only four points, leading her 999 now for the career. Cards take this one 73-50. They're 2-0 this season. Well, straight ahead, we go back to college football. Two straight losses for Kentucky. John Lewis and Eric Crawford explain what went wrong for the Wildcats yesterday against the Vols. Another week, another missed opportunity for Kentucky. After winning five of six, the Wildcats have now dropped two in a row and still sit one win shy of bowl eligibility. John Lewis and Eric Crawford have more on what's gone wrong over the last couple weeks. And guys, you got to believe Austin P. A. must win for the Cats, considering their season finale is against Louisville. Speaking of finales, we're getting closer and closer to the end of the NASCAR season. Sunday's event in Phoenix, the second to last race of the year. Today we narrow things down on the championship four with this man, Kyle Busch, be moving on. I'll tell you who isn't moving on, it's Matt Kenseth. Check it out, two laps to go. Kenseth colliding with Alex Bowman. We got a wreck, and we got a very sad Matt Kenseth who is out of the title picture. On to the final. Joey Logano, Kyle Busch, they went 1-2 today. Their championship hopes are alive as are Jimmy Johnson and Carl Edwards who move on as well. Hope to see you back here tomorrow night. Don't forget, coming up tomorrow, we hear from Bobby Petrino on the press conference at 1.30. Watch it at WDRV.com. Things did not look very good for the Louisville Cardinals tonight against Wake Forest. Their offense was out of sync, and their college football playoff hopes hung in the balance. They needed a hero. They got it in Brandon Radcliffe. Out to Papa John's Cardinal Stadium, where Louisville's offense was struggling big time in the first half. The Cards trailed 9-0 in the second, and they just could not get out of this funk. Lamar Jackson trying to get something going. A nice run. 
But watch it here at the end of the play. Loses the ball. Three turnovers for Louisville in the first half. The Cards trail 12-3 at the break. Third quarter. Signs of life for the offense. Brandon Radcliffe up the middle. Gone for a 55-yard touchdown. His longest run of the season. Louisville down two. To the fourth. More from Radcliffe. He goes seven yards for the touchdown. Cards up 16-12. They missed the two-point conversion. But that did not matter. Later in the quarter, Radcliffe putting it away for good. A 19-yard score, a career-high three touchdowns for the senior. Louisville would add three more scores, 44-12 to the final. The Cards, despite a bad start, still take it by a nice margin. Now, I think we're going to go to Bobby Petrino right now if he's available. Let's go to him now and check in with what he had to say. You can hear more of Bobby Petrino online by going to our website, WDRB.com. He's going to have a lot to say about this game. Now, this was certainly not a pretty win for Louisville, but it was still a win. And what makes this night even better for the Cardinals, get this, number two Clemson went down. The Tigers falling to unranked Pittsburgh. They were up too late in the fourth quarter. That's when Chris Blewett came on, and no, he did not blow it. A 48-yard field goal to give the Panthers a one-point lead. They would hang on for a 43-42 victory. A big, big win on the road in Death Valley. And it's also a nice break for Louisville, although at the end of the day, it looks like the Cards are still going to need some help to get into the college football playoff bowl. That certainly won't happen for Mississippi State, who got crushed by top-ranked Alabama today. And it won't happen for Maryland, who fell to the fifth-ranked Buckeyes. Now, there are still two games in progress right now, and we're going to want to keep an eye on them. Number three, Michigan taking on Iowa. Right now, in the third quarter, the Wolverines losing 11-10. Meanwhile, out west, this one is very close to being final. Fourth-ranked Washington against number 20 USC. It's the Trojans up 11. Again, they are late in the fourth quarter. So, folks, potentially, potentially tonight, we could be looking at three top five teams going down. This could be a huge night for the Louisville Cardinals. Well, up next, we still got much more football to talk about. Kentucky piled up a ton of yards against Tennessee, but they still came out on the losing end. John Lewis and Eric Crawford explain what went wrong. All the Kentucky Wildcats needed today was a win at Tennessee, and they were bowl eligible for the first time since 2010. Problem is, wins on the road against the Vols have been tough to come by for UK. 15 straight losses in Knoxville. They haven't won there since 1984. They hope to put an end to that streak today early on. Looked like they were going to do it. Things were clicking for the Cats. Boom Williams coming in here for the 10-yard score. UK up 7-0 two minutes in. Tennessee, however, would respond. Josh Dobbs to a wide open Josh Smith. Dobbs 404 total yards today. We're tied at seven. Cats went up 10-7 after a field goal, but back come the balls. Back comes Dobbs, this time doing it himself. A gain of 35 before being stopped at the one. The balls punched it in. They led 14-13 at the break. Second half, Cats down five, and here's they lost control. The flea flicker, Dobbs to Josh Malone. 51-yard touchdown. And despite racking up all kinds of yards of offense today, UK falls 49-36. John Lewis and Eric Crawford explain why this one went to the dogs for the Cats. Thanks, guys. So the Cats still searching for bowl eligibility, and so are the Indiana Hoosiers. IU had a chance to get there today, but they needed to beat number 10 Penn State to do it. This one a real back and forth second half between these two teams. We'll start in the third. IU up three, Divine Redding in for the touchdown. Indiana up 10, but the lead would not last. Fourth quarter, after two straight touchdowns from Penn State, the Hoosiers respond. It's Richard Lego on the money to Nick Westbrook. 40-yard touchdown. Hoosiers back up three, but there was still a ton of time left. In fact, you could say probably too much time. Under four to go, Saquon Barkley powering in for his second score of the day. Nittany Lions up four. And they would go on to win by the final of 45 to 31 in this one. And that is it for sports. Remember, go online to our website right now, WDRB.com. Hear more of Bobby Petrino on tonight's Louisville victory. That's sports tonight. We'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Weather from our happy